This should be the last lecture of North Africa and Southwest Asia. Uh, Syria and Jordan are two countries that are mm, connected to each other through history. Uh, both of them are mentioned in the Bible. Um, but they're worlds apart in um, how they're set up. Syria, the capital city, Damascus, is the world's oldest continually inhabited city. Syrians could be possibly supporting terrorism. Now we're getting more information as the conflict continues on in Syria that they probably do. Under a strong military rule. Um, and currently Syria is involved in a civil war, which is an offshoot of the Arab Spring that has continued. Most of the fighting that's in Syria today is in the large northern city of Aleppo. Uh, in Jordan, the capital city, Amman, there, it is very liberal. This is actually the queen of Jordan. Um, she's one of the most powerful women in the world, probably the most powerful woman in this region. As you see, she's not wearing a hijab. She's not wearing um, any sort of covering over her head or face. Jordan is a very liberal country when it's viewed by religious standards. Um, it is ruled by a king, and that is the queen there. When you get to the eastern portions of these two countries, you get into a desert. And as you can see, the cities, most of the cities are along the western side of the country, and the further out east you get, the drier it gets. Um, this is actually some people I know that went to Jordan. This is a an old, old, old building. Uh, when you get to Saudi Arabia, uh, the British took over Saudi Arabia, or what it was known then as Arabia, um, in the early 1900s, and they gave the power to Sheikh Ibn Saud, and that's where Saudi Arabia gets its name. So it's the Arabia of Saud. It's a very large territory with just a few cities, and that's where everyone lives. Most people live in cities because it's so dry in the rest of the country. Uh, it is very oil-rich. They have a lot of immigrants that come in from places like uh, the Philippines or Nigeria or India to work in the oil fields of Saudi Arabia. The two major religious cities in Saudi Arabia are Mecca and Medina. Both of them are important uh, Muslim religious cities. Uh, Saudi Arabia is also known for its coffee. Yes, it does grow coffee. And if you've ever noticed in coffee, coffee Coffee is made with Arabica beans. The first four letters of Arabica are A-R-A-B, Arab, same group of people. This is where coffee uh, growing as a agricultural product started, was in the very corner of Saudi Arabia and across the Red Sea in Ethiopia. They also have some silver and gold. Uh, also in the Arabian Peninsula, you have places like Yemen, which was unified into Yemen and South Yemen, after 1990. Uh, the USS Cole was a battleship that was bombed in one of the harbors of Yemen. It is a very poor country. It has had many terrorist threats and the US flies drone strikes recently into Yemen. Oman is very oil rich. The United Arab Emirates has two major cities, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. They're, the people there are extremely rich because of offshore investing through banks and also oil. Bahrain is an island country that um, serves as an oil's transport for a lot of the oil out of the region. And Qatar is full of natural gas and it's also home of Camp Doha, the main American air base in the region. Uh, one of the major drugs, or the major drug of the region, is a drug called cot, and they chew it. They can also brew it in a tea. It's this leaf here it has a similar effect to cocaine, and it's grown in parts of Arabia and East Africa. Oddly enough, cot also has found a home in Minnesota, particularly Minneapolis. And there are a lot of Arabs that have moved to Minneapolis and are involved in the cot trade there. And so the police and other law enforcement officials of that area have to deal with cot trade. Uh, there's Dubai, and this is a satellite image of Dubai. I know it's very strange to see, but the city was developed under oil wealth, and because of that, they have decided to just expend their wealth in weird ways, like building an island in the shape of a palm tree. 
or building an island building, yes, an island in the shape of the world, a larger like kind of palm tree or like this weird little crescent thing. They've done all this with oil money. They're extremely rich in Dubai. So rich, in fact, that they built the world's tallest building, as you can see. Second place comes about three quarters of the way up to the world's tallest building known as Burj Khalifa. It's the tallest building in the world. It was opened in 2010 in Dubai. If you've seen the new Mission Impossible movie, that building is the building. You can see it from like 20 some odd miles away. You can see the building. It's ridiculously tall. Uh, there's been a lot of debate about this body of water called the Persian Gulf or the Arabian Gulf. Persia is an old name for Iran. It's a very old, rich culture. Arabia is here, so it's been called both. And so there's this cultural war between Persia or Iran and Saudi Arabia. And another reason for this is because you have a lot of Shiites in Iran and Sunnis in Saudi Arabia. So you have a cultural conflict over who names. This is just a name. It's all it is is a place name. But it still, it, it has lasting effects on the cultural battles between the area. Uh, there's Kuwait, as you can see from this satellite image of Kuwait, very dry, extremely dry. A lot of sand, and then the capital city, Kuwait City, is right there. Um, Iraq was actually accused, accused Kuwait of angle drilling in 1991. That actually probably was true. Kuwait would build an oil well near the border and then drill up underneath the border into Iraq and take oil from there. And so Iraq was mad at Kuwait, so they invaded them in 1991. Well, the U.S. decided, well, you can't do that because we're using that oil. So the U.S. came in in 1991 and pushed Iraq out of Kuwait and back into Iraq. Uh, Kuwait is a former British territory, and it's known for its desalination plants. These are plants or places where they take seawater. And they process the seawater in using electricity. They process it into drinking water. They get all the salt out of it, basically. And in a dry area like this with a lot of money, it's easy to use desalination plants because they have plenty of money. They just don't have plenty of water. So they make water the only way they know how, through desalination plants. Now to Iraq. Iraq has three major segments, two major rivers. Two rivers are the Tigris and Euphrates, and you can kind of see them run through the middle of the country. And you have three major populated regions, the Kurdish, the Sunnis, and the Shias, or Shiites. Uh, the Kurds live in the north, and they're their own separate people group. They speak a different language and have different cultural traits than do the Sunnis and Shiites. There's oil in the north and also in the south, but not so much in the middle. And so you have three major groups competing for control of the country. Uh, the U.S. actually funded Iraq in a war in the 1980s against Iran. Uh, the Iraq war has caused a lot of issues. The U.S. invaded again back in 2001, 2002, after 9-11, searching for Saddam Hussein, weapons of mass destruction, and funding principles behind who was behind the 9-11 terrorist attacks. When the U.S. withdrew in 1991, there was... A fear uh, the, when the U.S. attacked Iraq in 1991 after Iraq invaded Kuwait, a lot of Iraqis thought, "Well, this means that they're going to overthrow our government in Iraq. We're going to be independent now." And when the U.S. left in 1991, Saddam Hussein, which was, who was president of the country, killed a lot of those opposition people who thought they were going to break away. There's a lot still today of this Sunni Shiite sectarian violence, the groups fighting against each other. You're Sunni, I'm Shiite, we're fighting for control of the country, we're in a war. And so that's basically what's still going on today. And then you also have Kurdish people in the northern part of the country who also fight for their rights. In Iran, you have you have a lot of things going on in Iran. It was formerly known as Persia. They celebrate a day called Death to America Day. They're, they've actually gone through an oil shortage because they have plenty of oil. They just have no way to process it or refine it. So they have a lot of issues there. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is this guy right here. He's, he's pretty loony. He denies the Holocaust ever happened. He's 
um, very anti-America, very anti-Israel. But he still uh, answers to the religious leader of Iran, the Ayatollah, Ayatollah Khomeini, as he's known here. Women are highly oppressed. Iran suffers from a lot of earthquakes. These are the Kurds. These people live in parts of Turkey, Iraq, and Iran. Um, they are a stateless nation. They don't have their own country, but they are a group of people. They were gassed by Saddam. Saddam used mustard gas and other gases on them in northern Iraq back in the 1980s. And many have also been killed in Turkey. You have Afghanistan, which uh, grows poppies. It's very dry. A lot of poor farmers live in Afghanistan. They have a lot of tribal identities. They don't see themselves as part of Afghanistan. They are part of their tribe. They are Uzbek or, or Tajik or Afghan or whatever tribe they are. They don't see themselves as Afghani. And so there are a lot of problems with trying to unite the Afghani people under one umbrella. Al-Qaeda is hiding and so is the Taliban <clears throat> in Afghanistan. And it is a very mountainous country which makes it very easy for them to hide. The leader of Afghanistan is Hamid Karzai. Uh, the U.S. is still there. They are still uh, fighting, trying to liberate Afghanistan and make it a unified country, but it's kind of hard to change minds of people. And that's the major struggle that America is dealing with today. Also, you have Pakistan, who has issues with border crossings, people leaving Afghanistan and coming to a, uh, Pakistan. They were hiding Bin Laden. This is an older PowerPoint, but they were hiding Bin Laden. He was hiding up in this region here. Uh, they have many tribes of people also like Afghanistan. It is very mountainous. And they've been playing this cat and mouse game with India since like 1948. They also have problems with insurgency, small militias, groups of people that want to fight against the government. They were hiding Osama Bin Laden, but he's now dead. Oil is one of the main things of this entire region. Uh, mismanaged funds are an issue because the leaders are getting richer while the people of the country are poor. Some of them resent U.S. companies because they believe the U.S. companies are taking all the oil money when it may be their government, in fact, that's doing it. Uh, the OPEC is the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. They control the export and the price of oil on the world market. They control 65% of the world's oil. There are other issues in the region, such as water desalinization. This is a big desalinization plant that processes the salt seawater into fresh water to drink or farm with. A lot of undemocratic governments, places where people can't vote for who their leader is, uh, they just have to live with what they have. There are terror cells throughout the region, and women's rights are always an issue because women aren't allowed to vote, drive in some places, a lot of issues like that.